Hello, welcome to episode 5 of this RabbitMQ EasyNetQ series. Today I'm going to give you a quick refresher on convention over configuration, and we'll take a quick look at EasyNetQ. So first, let's talk about convention over configuration. Convention over configuration is a programming technique where a framework will make behavioral assumptions based on how you name things, where you put files, and things like that. And the point of this is it can be a productivity boost. If we follow the conventions, then we don't have to do the same tedious configuration for every component that we write. Instead, we only need to use configuration when something deviates from the convention. It should be something familiar to you if you use ASP.NET MVC. So here's an example of a controller I've created called Balloon Controller. And if you notice, it's in the controllers folder of the solution. And I have created a method in that class named index. And I've also created a view in the views balloon folder called index.cshtml. And uh, one more thing is, this is not strictly a convention, but uh, when I create a new MVC project, there'll be this default route config, where it's controller slash action slash ID. So it, it's as good as a convention because most projects have this. Now I've barely done any coding here, but the ASP.NET MVC framework has already made some assumptions. So it knows that this is a controller class, you know, partly because um, I've inherited from the controller base class, and also because I've named it this way, balloon and uh, any word really, followed by a controller. So if I go to localhost slash balloon, this is just running the site locally, it knows that I'm trying to get to the balloon controller just by using this URL. It's also able to figure out, it's making the assumption that since I didn't type in an action here, you know, the action would typically go here, that because of that, I want to go to the index action. So it's made that assumption for me. So notice in the action, I'm just returning view, which is a method in the base class. I'm not specifying a view to use. So the ASP.NET MVC framework has assumed that I want to use a view named index that's in the views balloon directory. So it knows the controller and the action name, so it knows where to look for the view. If I want to call my view file name something different, I can. But now I'm deviating from the convention, so I have to specify that by changing this view to some other file name. And then it will know to look for that file. So what does this have to do with RabbitMQ? Well, as I showed you in the last few episodes, when we use RabbitMQ with the standard .NET API, there can be a lot of decisions to make. And just for instance, you know, what do we name the queues? You know, how do we serialize the messages in the queues? And there's lots of other things as well, quality of service and routing and so on. So we get a lot of flexibility with that RabbitMQ API, but it can be a bit daunting to have to make all the decisions up front. So unlike the default RabbitMQ.NET library, EasyNetQ is an opinionated library. This means that it's imposing its take on the RabbitMQ API in exchange for a simplified API that follows conventions. So two of the core opinions of EasyNetQ are that messages should be represented by .NET types and that messages should be routed by their .NET type. So that alone is a pretty powerful opinion. But you can already see that this is imposing some restrictions in that to, to most easily use EasyNetQ, we have to be using .NET on both ends, which in many cases is, is fine um, to get the most out of EasyNetQ anyway. We could still consume with another library or another language. We would just have to um, program it to follow those same conventions. One other thing that EasyNetQ has an opinion about is serialization. So it will use the Newtonsoft JSON.NET library to serialize messages. So we don't have to worry about that detail anymore. It does it for us. So when we use EasyNetQ, we'll see that the queues, for instance, are going to be named after the .NET types put into them. 
So for instance, and in, this is from the EasyNetQ documentation, a message type uh, party invitation, and it's in a namespace, we'll have a queue named after that namespace and the object, and it'll also append the subscription ID as well, which we'll see what that means um, in following episodes. So as long as we stick to that convention, we're going to gain some productivity. Now we can control the name of the queue. So convention over configuration doesn't mean we com completely lose flexibility. It just means that we have to do some more work if we want to go against the grain of the convention. So we could tell EasyNet queue to call the queue something else, call the exchange something else. And this will also allow us to use EasyNet queue to subscribe to messages that were created by some other language or library. So next time I'm going to start coding in EasyNet queue and show you a more concrete example. Thanks for watching.